Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams. We're going to talk about recent aerial deer surveys and how the herd is faring so far this winter. Jeb, I guess you certainly have enough snow that you can do your counts this year, with a few exceptions. Yeah, the majority of the state, we were able to do our, our winter whitetail aerial surveys, which we've not been able to do to, at least in this, much, uh, in this much detail for a number of years due to the lack of snow that we've had in previous winters. So it's always a bit of a double-edged sword though, I, you know, with the, with the winter surveys, is if you are able to do the surveys, that means you have enough snow on the landscape to, you know, to accurately count deer. You don't want to, you know, patchy type conditions out there. And right. so... Um, so the big game biologists and other staff that are completing the surveys like to have that minimum of, of 12 inches on the level out there to be able to accurately count. And so we're able to complete the, the winter surveys in the majority part of the state, which is, which is good for obviously collecting data, collecting the information as far as see just another tool that we have to gauge where that deer population is in the state. Now, if you don't have enough snow to do the surveys, that's also good. It also means that the deer <laughs> are probably wintering fairly well, that you don't have enough snow to do the surveys, which means the deer aren't struggling through a tough winter. And so um, it's, uh, on one hand, it's good that we're able to get that, collect that information. On the other hand, if you're not able to collect it, it means that the deer herd probably isn't gonna have to struggle through a tough winter. Well, the big question I'm sure that's on a lot of people's minds, how are they doing? Well, from, our, from the surveys that were done, I, I think that the, you know, from compared to previous years, from the last time that the survey was actually done, in a lot of the areas of the state, the deer, deer numbers have increased over the last couple of years. Now, that's not, that's not everywhere in the state, obviously, but there are some pretty good numbers that we collected in the, in the aerial surveys. Uh, from you know from previous years from three about three years ago when some of those surveys were able to be complete which I think people would agree with that uh, in, in some parts of the state these last couple years the deer numbers were starting to climb a little bit the trend w was starting to increase uh, from from what it from what it was here just a couple years ago so that's good news um, the other good news portion of that is that you know it looks like January and February are continuing to be fairly mild and you know it sure would be nice if we could say at the end of this winter that in in a totality we did not have a bad winter right. we had a horrible december december was a struggle right yeah. and so that's 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 some good news i mean i think that the weather conditions that we've been seeing as of late has definitely uh, opened up some hilltops created some different areas for deer to be at and and for them not to be continually stressed like they were in the month of december well i know uh, you also count on your depredation reports that you change every week um, and there for a while, in early January, you, they were huge. And uh, have they slacked off at all, or, or are you still getting a lot of reports? And, we, and we are still getting some reports, but it definitely has tapered off. I, you know, I think the majority of the producers that, uh, that are dealing with depredation concerns were, right now are probably the ones that were dealing with those in, in late December and early part of January. Okay. So we still do get some that, uh, that come in this time of year, but uh, I think the, the majority of depredation cases that we're probably dealing with right now, and, and again, that's the, la the latest number was over, over 250 different producers across the state and the majority of those coming in the central part of the state uh, in the, the north central and in the central part of the state where sure. where the majority of the snowfall is sure as long as we're talking about different geographic regions and stuff we know we're going to lose deer we do every year are there areas that are worse than others uh, for sure, yeah. The you know the central and north central northeast part of the state uh, moving in that direction is is where the extreme snowfalls uh, you know situations have taken place and where the extreme weather has been this year. The southeast part of the state has has been uh, you know not nearly as severe. They did have some. Uh, you know, fairly severe conditions, critter-wise, with uh, freezing rain over mm -hmm. the Christmas break, where they didn't didn't get a lot of the snow, but got rain that put a pretty good two to three, four-inch layer of ice on the ground for a period of time, which definitely is not good for critters as well. But uh, that's an area of the state that uh, definitely did not have the uh, significant snowfall that other parts did. I think everybody's been enjoying this little recent spate of nice weather. We're expecting record-breaking. Uh, temperatures here in Bismarck, highs in the 50s. That's got to su 
to uh, supply some relief, I would guess? It does. It, it continues to open up some different areas. Uh, you know, again, some more hilltops to where deer can fend for themselves a little bit and, uh, you know, utilize some of the, you know, some of the natural vegetation that's out there that, uh, that they need, uh, you know, this time of year. And so it provides, it provides relief in a couple different ways. It provides relief to the deer herd to, uh, again, to, to get them into some more, dealing with some of the more natural, uh, natural feeding environments and, and, and getting them the forage that they need and it also relieves stress on those depredation producers that we visited about oh, sure. uh, that, uh, that you know those deer don't want to be in, in and around those hay yards and around those farmsteads any more than um, any more than that producer wants them in there they would assume being out on taking care of themselves feeding on their own but um, obviously they're they're challenged in having to do so with the amount of snow that was on the landscape this helps that this definitely gets those deer out and about uh, you know back out back out in the back 40 a little bit more <laughs> than, uh, than, the, than what they've been. All right, Jeb, let me ask you this, and this is kind of a technical question. Some people are under the impression that um, this mild weather that we're having, that uh, these deer have been struggling for a couple of months now. They've been fighting the winters and things, and now that you mentioned they can get at some feed stores and things like that, can they actually put fat stores back on in the middle of the winter like this or is it just kind of one continuous struggle? Yeah, it's very difficult in our North Dakota winters to actually to make a move upward as far as health wise go. You know, they deer start and other critters, they start at a certain health level and they go into winter in North Dakota and have so much that they rely on to get them through that winter. These conditions help put them in more of a steady pattern, a neutral type, you know, is I guess for lack of a better word, as far as where their where their health uh, is going, they won't necessarily their their health won't necessarily get better, uh, but it definitely puts them in a bit of a holding pattern to where they can still to where they're not using continual to use fat reserves with these nice days and nice conditions. So it's definitely a benefit. You know, you can't say it's, it's building them up, but they're not necessarily going downward. And they're that's, holding their own exactly, and that's and that's the most important thing in North Dakota winter. All right, give me an overall impression of how the deer herd is faring so far in the winter of 2017? Well, our, you know, our, the, the results from the survey in January, again, we had some, we had, we had some positive things uh, in comparison to where the deer herd was three years ago, three, four years ago in some of those areas. So th that, was, that was a good thing. You know, one of the things that we usually plan on doing is when we do the aerial deer surveys in January is doing some follow-ups in, in March. Uh, a lot of our research shows that the, the fatalities tend to take place in March and April. And, and so if we can get some follow-ups in March to see where that, to get that comparison from where they were in January, that's a good indicator. I don't think we're going to be able to do that based on the next num the forecast coming up that's going to allow it to, but again, that's, that's okay. That, I mean, that's not bad either. And so I think overall from when the surveys were done and the weather conditions that we've had since then, I think the deer herd is going to be doing okay moving into the, moving into the spring months. Now, we don't know what March is going to bring. We don't know what April is going to bring. We just know what January has been and what it looks like February is going to end with, and that is certainly good news. As long as I've got you here, Jeb, let's talk a little bit about the pheasant populations. I know they struggled during December, but have they rebounded at all? Are they faring okay? Well, I think that the, the pheasants on the landscape right now, again, have appreciated January and February. Uh, December was a horrible month for, for conditions when, you, when we talk about any critters, but especially pheasants. Uh, deep snow, lots of wind, lots of cold. I mean, that's just, a, that's just a bad recipe for trying to keep pheasants on the landscape in North Dakota. So there was loss in, in North Dakota in, in the month of December when it comes to pheasants. We, we know that, um, you know, we know that the struggles that, they've, that, that they had to deal with in the month of December. And so, uh, again, the good news is for what, what we've been given in January and February hasn't been bad for pheasants, but we know that there was some loss in December. All right, so we keep our fingers crossed for some, at least some mild months coming up. If we can keep the pattern that we've been in, that would be great. You know, it's hard to say what March and April is going to bring, but boy, you know, the, the upcoming forecast is sure beneficial to uh, both people and critters alike. All right, Jeb, thanks. Thank you. There are still some openings in hunter education classes across the state. You can enroll by logging on to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. Go to the Hunter Education page and search for a class in an area near you. 
Some will be full, but there are openings and others that might suit your time schedule. The classes are free and include 14 hours of classroom study and hands-on work with firearms. For Jeb Williams and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.